Hi, it's Dr. Lisa, and this video is for clinicians who are assessing shortness of breath or dyspnea over the phone. So I've used information from the University of Oxford Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine. There is no validated tool currently to assess breathlessness over the phone. The Roth score is promising, but needs more research. So what can we use? Well, a good history is key, and 111 use the following questions. So number one, ask the patient to describe their breathing problem in their own words. Listen to the ease and comfort of their breathing. Can they complete sentences in one breath? Are they so breathless that they're unable to speak more than a few words? Document this. Number two, are you breathing faster or harder than usual when doing nothing at all? And then three, you need to establish their baseline before you can ask them, but are you so ill that you've stopped doing all your normal activities? Washing, dressing, making the bed, tying your shoes, cooking. So establish what their baseline is, what they can normally do without becoming breathless, and then you need to ask what has changed. So the main thing is focusing on change and a history of deterioration is important. So further questioning would be, is your breathing faster, slower, or the same as normal? Two, what could you do yesterday that you cannot do today? Three, what is making you breathless or breathe faster today that didn't make you breathless yesterday? Now these questions are all from 111's um, symptom checker. My take on shortness of breath over the phone, what I ask, I, I'm asking patients to look in the mirror and at their lips and ask them what colour they are. Don't use a leading question by saying, are they pink? Um, two, can you walk across the room and back and would this normally make you short of breath? So ask the patient if it's safe to do so and their mobility permits to walk across the room and back to where they were sitting and you'll also hear what their breathing rate does, what they're, if they're wheezing um, and ask them how they feel. Three, I ask patients, does it feel like you're able to take in a full breath? Um, I also ask them, does it feel like your breathing is shallow or you're breathing in from the top part of your lungs? Don't forget to ask about chest pain or pain when taking a deep breath. Uh, we need to make sure we're ruling out PEs and MIs as people who are isolating will be moving less and we need to keep this at the forefront of our mind also. Um, remember to ask about wheezing. So explain what a wheeze is to a patient because a lot of people do not know. This is a high pitched whistling or squeaking sound that occurs when you breathe out. Um, document if no audible wheeze is heard over the phone. Asthmatics and COPD patients, obviously they are going to be a little bit more stressed and anxious. So you need to establish their baseline, how often they normally use their relievers. So if you're speaking with an asthmatic, if they normally use it once a day or just once a week, and suddenly that's increased to four to five times a day, this would be an indication that their breathing is strained and worsened. Ask them how many times they're using it and is it giving them relief? Encourage all patients with breathing problems to take a few full deep breaths few times a day to help expand the base of their lungs. Go over their personal asthma action plan and this is important what's on their notes because you'll know what step in their asthma treatment they're on and try and send this as a, as a text to the patient. Issue a spacer to elderly patients who may not use inhalers properly because this means they'll get more of the drug delivered into their lungs. Advise all asthmatics that they can take up to 10 puffs of their inhaler at once which equates to a nebulizer. If this does not relieve their wheezing or their chest tightness, they should call 999. So just a quick note on the Roth score. This is used to assess oxygen saturations. It is not validated, but is promising. So how do we do it? Ask the patient to take a deep breath in. As they breathe out, count 30 in their own language out loud. You need to have a timer ready. And if the patient takes a breath, at eight seconds or less. This indicates saturation levels of less than 95%. And this test has a sensitivity of 78% and specificity of 71%. So make your own choice whether you want to use it or not or rely on it. There are also some apps on iPhones for oxygen saturation levels, but these have not been validated or approved. Some practices are sending out some kits with pulse oximeters um, and a thermometer and leaving it outside the door for the patient to take in, do their readings, nurse waits outside until they've done them and then it gets decontaminated between patients. Hope you find this helpful and best of luck everyone.